The sands of time have run out. I can safely say without question, this is by far the worst PlayStation console to date. The cries of war echo upon the winds. The biggest fucking man children out there, I'm surprised they can even wipe their own fucking asses, are these fucking Xbox fanboys. The remnants of the past scar the land. PlayStation fanboys could literally defend pedophilia at this point, and it wouldn't even surprise me is besieged once again by conflict. Like fools, we clung to the old hatreds and fought as we had for generations. Until the day the sky rained fire, and the new enemy came among us. We stand now upon the brink of destruction, for the reign of chaos has come at last. Since the dawn of time, men and women have created social circles. We banded together against the elements and that bitch mother nature with the common goal of survival. But due to the unfortunate creation of the internet, the worst kinds of people can form their own groups without physically being present. I'm talking, of course, about console fanboys. Xbox fanboys, it's time to fucking accept it. Once and for all, it's long overdue for you to accept that Xbox fucking blows. God, it fucking blows. Some call them ponies or Xbox, but that is cringe and totally not based. You know who I'm talking about, people that base their entire persona on loving this one thing and hating everything else. There's nothing wrong with liking something and being a fanboy, but it's the toxic fanboys you gotta look out for. Thank you, Angel. Now, the Angel had a PS5 controller in their hand, so I, I knew it was an Angel, because demons have Xbox controllers when they visit you. Well, I'm out, man. I think it's tripping. The day the Xbox console dies, I'm going to be chanting in these Twitter streets and dancing on bot tears. It hurts to read, doesn't it? You know, some folk would have you believe that there's only one piece of gamer plastic that is truly worth your time, and all other pieces of gamer plastic are inferior. That person is me, and this yes. is the best gamer plastic there is. There are fans and fanboys to everything, okay? To everything. Everybody needs something to grasp onto, even though it can be complete fucking dog shit. I mean, there, there are probably fans out there of dog shit, literal dog shit. You know, whether it's bragging about which one has the best graphics games, the controller specs, these people will scrap and fight over the stupidest details to appear superior. Peach Fuzz rendering is extremely hard and demanding for computers to render. From mere observation, I can confirm that Senua from Hellblade 2's latest gameplay lacks this feature, making her model look much, much worse than Aloy on PS5. Okay, uh, you, you see what I'm saying, right? Important video game discussions. Fucking peach fuzz rendering. Are you, are you serious? <laughs> Motherfuckers out here 
talking about the Peach Fuzz rendering, dude. Super Mario Odyssey is great and all, but my god, does Mario and Peach look disgusting without the Peach Fuzz rendering? <laughs> Damn, dude, how's my- how's my Peach Fuzz rendering? Can you even see? Fuck, dude, my model looks so worse than Aloy's. You know, like, like, I'm a fanboy for... Banjo and Kazooie! Do I feel the need to sprint to my Twitter and talk shit about every other 3D platformer ever made? No. Because though small it may be, there still exists some shred of dignity and self-respect within me. It's okay to play only one console. It's okay to play them all. It's all right if you like one console and don't like the others. But where is this coming from, Actman? Why have you chosen violence today? Well, if you follow me on Twitter, perhaps you've seen some of my tweets lampooning some of the PlayStation fanboys that gush over The Last of Us 2 like a simp out of water. You might remember that guy that tried to compare Metroid Dread and God of War? Uh, and got fucking ratioed straight into Valhalla. Like, good god, he had to delete it. It was so funny. Oh, it was this guy, by the way. Even one of the developers for the new God of War replied with Heart Metroid Dread, and it just... So, I'd see this kind of crap on my Twitter feed and make fun of it like anybody would, but this would cause the goon squad to show up. In the replies, quote retweets, and they just poked the hornet's nest a little too much. I'm coming for you. you! You poked it a little too much, okay? Obviously, this doesn't represent the communities as a whole, you know? This is more of the, like, extreme stupid side of things, or like the shit posters and trolls. My goal is not to add fuel to the console war fire. I'm not here to discuss how the lack of peach fuzz on Master Chief's helmet makes Infinite literally unplayable, because who honestly gives a shit? Now, in my personal experience, uh, if you go on Twitter and look at the topics of, like, PlayStation and Xbox, you'll kind of notice this trend of tweets with PlayStation in it are constantly trying to dunk on Nintendo and Microsoft. At least on Twitter, it seems like the Sony cultists are the worst of the bunch. Because Nintendo will just keep excusing whatever horrible anti-consumer bullshit they do and pretend like Nintendo is perfect. And Xbox fanboys will keep jerking themselves off thinking about the glory days of Xbox Live and lament the fact that they can't use racial slurs without repercussions. Obviously, these are hyperbolic examples, right? But what about the PC community? That's kind of a console, a platform, isn't it? Well, why would I make fun of them? Their platform is superior. But they don't have any friends. It's just the nature of things, you know? Now, I feel like the PC Master Race has really chilled out and gotten far less douchey and in your face about, like, graphics and blast processing. Probably because they're all too busy trying to find a fucking graphics card that's not $3,000. It's like they finally realized people can enjoy gaming in different ways and that not everyone is willing to drop $2,000 on a computer that will, for some reason, still not run games properly. All this toxicity is really just a byproduct of the outdated console war phenomenon. But back in the day, it felt more like, okay, okay, I'm a fanboy for the original Xbox, and the PlayStation 2 may be the best-selling console in the world, but you know what's nice? Playing Battlefront 2 with three of your homies. You can't do that on PS2. You know, it's like, okay, okay, I'll give you Shadow of the Colossus, I'll give you that one, but, um... Ooh, look at that, look at that. You know, so, that's kind of what it felt like back in the day. It's like, okay, PlayStation, I'll give you this W, but I'm taking this one. And nowadays, it just seems like both sides are kind of like, nothing is good on PlayStation. There's nothing good about PlayStation 5, bro. Xbox has always been shit. Phil Spencer killed my father. I have all the W's. You have all the L's. Like, I'm not gonna lie and say I don't think the PlayStation 5 controller is cool. Because I'm a fan of games. And video games. More than I am a single platform. You know, competition is great, especially when it's healthy and encourages both companies to do better. A lot of it was fueled by the corporations back in the day, you know, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. But now it's like totally flipped, like, <laughs> the fans are the ones talking shit, and the companies are the ones like shaking hands publicly, you know what I mean? 
Halo Infinite is dead, Forza is dead, Gears of War is dead, Game Pass is dying, everything's dead or dying, Xbox Live is a terrorist organization, Xbox didn't just die, it was murdered. You know that Peach Fuzz rendering thing is actually like an interesting detail? Like that's a next level step of immersion and graphical fidelity? But why can't Sony fanboys just find something they like? and say, this is cool, this is neat, without being like, this is cool, this is neat, and oh, by the way, every other game literally ever made sucks dick. They have to compliment something and then insult something else. But it's the same, it's, it's like a sports mentality. Oh, fanboys, you make my life so simple. You really do. When I think about content that I want to put out on the channel, you make my day so simple on what to do. Because actual grown men, fighting on Twitter about plastic boxes that play video games under their TVs makes for the best kind of content. Your team has to suffer for me to feel good. I need to watch things die from a distance. You are a factory of sadness! Merry Christmas, but also a moment of silence for all those who wished for a PS5 but woke to an Xbox Series S this morning. Homie, you literally up at 8 a.m. on Christmas continuing the console wars. Give it a rest for one day. <laughs> Merry Christmas, but also fuck Xbox. <laughs> Next is Starfield to be pushed back to 2023. Mark my words, y'all hardcore Xbox fans busy gobbling up the scraps on Game Pass. Demand better. Trust me, Xbox influencers are slowly killing it with fake hype. Meanwhile, PS5 is gonna have one of the best years in gaming. But also, like, shouldn't you look forward to new games? Like, I'm looking forward to Horizon Forbidden West. Why would I celebrate the fact that it was delayed or something? Oh, well, if I was like a dickhead, I gotta give Xbox its props. They finally on par with the PS3 era. This is Xbox. Yeah, this is, I, I think this guy is like an actually funny troll. So I'll, I'll give it to him. PlayStation 5 and PC releases, no Xbox. I don't like Squeenix, but it's good to know Xbox doesn't have support. Dude, it is seriously a rabbit hole and I have gone down it. You find one account, you'll look at their Twitter feed, and you find 10 more. Now I realize some of these people that I am making fun of will celebrate this video as an affirmation of their victory. Yes, I triggered the act man. I'm gonna say it. No, please. I'm gonna say it. Please, anything but that. The Last of Us 2. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. Act Man died. I said the magic words. We are gathered here to mourn the death of the acting male. The Last of Us 2's greatness was just too much for him. This is like the fantasy that plays through their heads when they think they're triggering me. But I imagine a lot of these Twitter accounts exist the same way Kotaku does. As a continuous self-deprecating joke whose only relevance is found by pissing people off with the most batshit takes you could possibly imagine. What's worse is the ones that try to pretend like they're serious, while others try to say they're making genuine criticisms and demanding better. No, you're not. And some try to disguise it as lay epic troll moment. Haha, <laughs> I have trolled you so good. So when I call them out, they're going to pretend like I'm playing into their game because they have no other way to recover. Haha! -ha, I've upset the act man and now I'm getting more interactions! Listen buddy, you're not benefiting off of my attention. I'm benefiting because you got my attention. I don't normally brag about clout because I try not to be a douchebag, but it's kind of the only way to put these people in their place. So let's make one thing clear. I am the one getting the clout, and I'm kind enough to let you leech off of it. I'm better at life than you. Okay, so let's, all right, that's let's fair. Let, I'm gonna crush you on here in front of everybody because I'm tired of hearing about it. I feel really bad for Xbox. PlayStation set the bar too high. It's unreachable. And it's like, here's four screenshots of four different games. Like, wow, it's a profound, profound statement. Yeah, dude, some of these guys, like, they keep jumping into the lion's den and posting their shit takes on Twitter, and they get ratioed, and they just come straight back. Like, getting ratioed by Xbox Game Pass Twitter. You, you gotta respect the hustle to provide us with all this entertainment. 
Yeah, they uh, they had some kind of meltdown because Xbox partnered with like a nail polish company to sell DLC for Halo Infinite. And many of these Xbox, and you, I can't blame Xbox users, right? They have an IQ below room temperature because you know they they're, they're too busy going to gay parades and you know painting their fingernails with Master Chief nail polish. Nigga, what's wrong with you? You a grown ass man. I know your mother raised you better than that dog. Is that is that really something to complain about? I mean, companies are doing the weirdest things to promote their games and tie in. Like, but like I said, dude, they'll take anything. Phil Spencer will sneeze on camera and they'll write a 15 minute dissertation on like, what does this mean for the future of Xbox? Is Xbox doomed? Does Phil Spencer have AIDS? Yellow flag for this garbage of the year. PC players have more taste in gaming after try some PS exclusives. I have more taste in gaming. My taste buds have more. <laughs> Deathloop was downloaded more in 2021 than Returnal. Both games are not available on Xbox. Look at me, I don't like Xbox, aren't I cool? I feel like this tweet will get a lot of flack, but I'm actually more hyped for Uncharted 4 Remastered than anything from Xbox. Just, just say you're hyped for Uncharted 4, dude. But yeah, if you're wondering why I'm blacking out some of the names, um, yeah, I'm not gonna let them chase any clout from this one. Uncharted 4, one of the best games ever made in my opinion. It still demolishes every other third-person action-adventure when it comes to core gameplay mechanics and graphical animations fidelity. Are you saying it's better than... The Last of Us 2? No, no. I don't believe that. Xbox fans, please don't compare Horizon to Halo Infinite. We know Horizon has better graphics, not just the graphics. Halo Infinite literally has zero animations. <laughs> At least The Last of Us has something Infinite doesn't. Females. <laughs> All right, so let's break this down. Halo Infinite literally has no females, no animations, no graphics, and no gameplay. It's not a video game. It's literally not a video game. Things have been rough for Xbox this month. I've barely played any games on it, and I'm still number one on the leaderboard. With all the delays and pushbacks, can we all agree that Xbox still has no games? It has no games, but you're clearly playing a decent chunk of them. Like, you have 1900 gamer score in one month. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, actually. Why am I seeing Xbox incels making fun of Jim Ryan's we believe in generation statement? <laughs> you, you literally have people like taking pictures of shopping malls being like, the Xbox section was removed and replaced with USB cables. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, it looks like they kind of completely renovated that whole store too. They changed the flooring and put up more signs. Like, what? what's your point? Xbox users complain about not getting Japanese games, but won't play Octopath Traveler? Is it because Xbox users can't comprehend stories that don't involve nuclear fallout and space exploration? The only words I understood in this were nuclear fallout and space exploration. I guess that's just the brain trauma from my tiny pea-sized Xbox brain. One of the funnier habits the Sony fanboys have is comparing any PlayStation game to literally anything else. Cross-gen Horizon Crabs vs. Next-gen Hellblade. We can clearly see that Gorilla is a top-tier studio and Ninja Theory are mid-untalented with no ability to manage resources to produce a next-gen game. We out here comparing crabs. We're talking about crab graphics now. Peach fuzz rendering and crab graphics. The two most critical components to making a good, successful video game. Mother motherfucking crab graphics, dude. You know, guys, I was playing Battle for Bikini Bottom, and I'm just gonna say it, the crab graphics were just not on point. I, I literally had to stop playing it. But that's the thing, they'll compare a PlayStation title to anything. Real-time strategy games, puzzle games, the steak you had last night, they'll compare Horizon Forbidden West to the sounds of the ocean. Last of Us 2 has way better gameplay than Doom Eternal, and it's not even close. Oh, it's way better. Much more advanced animations, better shooting, way better AI, and just overall simulation fidelity. And this is like, this is where we arrive at. They want every single game to be like The Last of Us 2. If it's not like this hyper-realistic, interactive movie, walking simulator kind of game, then it's not a good video game, and it needs to be like that. 
look, there's something to be said for like that interactive movie like quality and attention to detail that makes The Last of Us like so engaging and immersive. But fucking Doom doesn't need any of that shit. You know what I mean? Like, imagine if Halo turned the, the vehicle flip and made that an animation that you had to go through. Can you imagine how tiring and annoying that would get to like watch, like go to a third person view and watch your character like, uh, 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 tap X, tap X, tap X, tap X, vehicle flipped. Uh, and then you have like five seconds before you get control. It would, it would be infuriating. You can't just take like one game and, and like, try to apply the same standards to everything else. Why does Halo Infinite look like a low-budget game, when in reality Microsoft spent 500 million for the game and it's seven years in development? You see, and there's also people just like spouting lies, like the 500 million dollar budget thing I think has been debunked, and seven years it was not in development for seven years. Just, just so we're clear. And it's like, oh yes, I too can cherry pick screenshots to make something look good and make this thing that I don't like look bad. I too can edit. Eight years later, GTA 5 is 2021's most watched game on Twitch. Halo is not back. Like, why, why can't we all just complain that GTA 5 needs to die and should fuck off and fuck Rockstar? Why can't we have that conversation instead of like, oh, GTA 5 is still popular? Oh, <laughs> Halo's dead. That means, <laughs> God. They'll compare Halo Infinite to Far Cry 2. Uh, they'll compare it to Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. They'll compare Horizon Forbidden West to a trailer for Hellblade 2. Uh, they, they'll compare NPCs. I actually really like The Last of Us 2. I think it's a really good game, but most people who see this shit are instantly turned off because it's obsessive fans feel the need to compare it to every game ever. Doom Eternal and The Last of Us 2 are very, very different games. Why do this? For attention, because daddy didn't pay you enough of that. Like, they're comparing weapon models from the last, like... Peach Fuzz rendering, weapon models, crab graphics. How much lower could we possibly go? Why do Xbox fans get mad if you compare a video game to another video game? They say it's not fair because they are different genres, but they get happy if you compare video games to TV shows. Game Pass to Netflix, why? It's the same reason people would get mad if I was genuinely serious about comparing Tetris to The Last of Us 2. You're making a stupid comparison. In today's economy, I don't think Elden Ring seems like a big enough improvement over past games. Especially when other devs are clearly putting in more effort. Like, they, they go through the effort to put together these, like, comparison videos that don't make any point. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it reuses some animations, fine. Just a reminder, Xbox's flagship title and $500 million budget can't beat PlayStation's new IP and Metacritic score. This is sad. Halo Infinite versus Ghosts of Tsushima. And, and it's, I like how it's always the, the critic scores that they look at and talk about and like the critic awards and everything, which is like, yeah, that's part of it. But how come you don't show like user scores? Those are always kind of conveniently cropped out. I think user scores are a much better indication of if a game is actually good or not because companies will just fucking, oh yeah, Call of Duty Vanguard, seven, eight out of 10 and just like move on with their lives. Some critics don't know games like regular people do. Metro wishes that it played as seamlessly and fluid as The Last of Us 2 and not the PS2 era janky trash it is. You see, this is why people hate the, the Last of Us 2. You know, after finishing Mein Kampf, it made me realize just how much better The Last of Us 2's writing is. Like, you you guys can do it too. Like, post, post a meme down below. Compare anything to The Last of Us 2 and it'll be funny. The Last of Us 2 is unique in that it's the only game I've seen whose entire fan base on here talks and acts like K-pop fans. Exactly. Like, you guys, on the real, you guys are doing more harm than good to the perception of The Last of Us 2. Like, I haven't played the game yet. I literally have nothing bad to say about it because I haven't experienced it for myself. I think the memes are funny. I hear what people have to say, but I'm not jumping to my own conclusion. Look, look. Look, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not burning or dying. I have a sealed copy of The Last of Us 2. But you guys are so obnoxious and annoying because you're, you're poking the hornet's nest of every other fan base out there. And it just... You make people hate The Last of Us 2 more than The Last of Us 2 makes people hate The Last of Us 2. It's just, it kind of comes down to this liking one thing and hating everything else and making that your only distinguishable personality trait 
It just makes you a boring fucking person. None of the vegetation in Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart reacts to you. This is partly why Insomniac are B-grade and can't make Game of the Years. The <laughs> because of the veg- the plants, dude. This is the plant guy. This is the guy that was complaining about the- like, that you could walk into a plant in Halo Infinite. And now he's doing the same with Ratchet and Clank. He's turning against his herd, man. Wow, this is unreal. And he's doing the same with Infinite. Like, are you a botanist? Is this your job? Like, what a claim to fame. I'm the guy who makes fun of plants in video games. <laughs> bro, bro. Right now I'm outside. Homie is outside taking pictures of trees and like running back to his computer like, this, this doesn't add up. This doesn't add up in Halo Infinite. <laughs> Touch grass, go outside, stay outside, get off Twitter. You know, I guess there's a market for everything these days, you know. Like, the console war is still well and alive, but it's kind of kept on life support by these people who haven't moved on. Like, entire YouTube channels are dedicated to covering the console wars. Isn't that just astounding? Like, th this is the type of shit talk that I- that I love. Right here. What else they bullshit us about? There ain't no fucking herd of Bambies drinking Arrowhead water in front of me. There ain't no campfires with fire em embers and shit and thunderstorms. There ain't no goddamn hieroglyphics nowhere in the game. There ain't no walkie-talkies getting knocked over from the weight of a rhino. There ain't no motherfucking footprints in this motherfucker either, my nigga. What the fuck? There ain't no rhinos smoking blunts. Like, it's creative. It's funny. You know, it's playful. It's not serious. And let's be real, folks. Xbox won the war ages ago in this historic moment. PlayStation fanboys just never lived it down. In conclusion, it's okay to like video games. It's okay to like The Last of Us 2. It's okay to like games that other people don't like. I just hope, that my fans especially, that we're able to talk about that in a way that's not just like, well, everything this video was about. I've never compared Halo Infinite to The Last of Us because there's nothing to compare. You know, I'm not sitting here twiddling my thumbs, you know, licking my lips, waiting for the day that PlayStation crumbles. No, that's Activision. That's Activision Blizzard. Let's focus on the real bad shit in the games industry and call that out instead. In conclusion, fanboyism is cringe. And console fanboys are cringe. Toxic console fanboys are cringe. So thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to the Act Man for more console war drama? Jim Ryan said what? You won't believe this. That's all I got for today, this is the Act Man signing out. Peace!